Okay, in this category, we have the harmonic processors. So they are dealing with harmonic content. That's why I have this spectrum analyzer. And well, I am use this string instrument, it's an acoustic guitar, which has a lot of harmonics. It's it's a good example here. So here we can see the um, harmonics that this guitar is creating. So it's very rich. All the strings have a lot of harmonics and so they have very rich sounds, all string instruments. Okay, so the point is I have this exciter and so the controls are pretty straightforward. You have the harmonics control. In this case, this would be equivalent to a drive control or a mount control and you can adjust the kind of filter to process the signal above this frequency, this cutoff frequency. So we can start adding. Actually, the exciter is quite simple to use. You just have to start adding harmonics and to notice that subtle effect uh, like brightness. So let's hear it. to do it kind of drastic you see that's a lot and maybe you can notice that the high frequency content has changed you see there's less activity in this area around 4 uh, 8k So it sounds brighter and honestly I would say this is too much that's the main risk with exciters that you may add too much you always have to go my recommendation is to go as little as you can notice and maybe then take a little step back for example in this case I would go something like this See, it's just a very, very subtle brightness. In this case, I also can hear my harmonic signal only. And for example, I don't have my dry signal, it's only the exciter signal. So I can fine tune this and I can see what kind of harmonics I am adding to my signal. So if I want only high frequency, like here, it's seven kilohertz, I could uh, leave it that way. Maybe I would need a little more. Maybe that's all it needs, maybe I I used a lot, I don't know. It's not a lot, but maybe it's too much for, for many years. So you would need to take back a little bit. This uh, processor also has two different colors of two kind of sounds, but it's up to you. Decide which one works. At least for this case, I don't hear a lot of difference. Okay, now I have another tool. This is uh, from Ozone and it's a exciter too, but in this case, I have two bands for this exciter. So I can hear my harmonics or I can create harmonics for the low frequency for the high frequency. So let me try with high frequency. And I have different kinds of systems to generate these harmonics like tape, tube, uh, triode and other electronic devices. So I'm adding this amount, it's kind of my drive. 
it, so it sounds different. You see. This is the warmth that a tube creates, or maybe a tape. It sounds different. So once I found the one I want, I take it off. I hear everything, and now I'm adding it. That's it. You see, this is a nice tape distortion. Maybe a tube. Sounds different. Now I can do the same for the low frequency. Just be aware that low frequency can distort easier. You, you hear? That's a lot of distortion. Maybe you want that for some instruments, so be careful. Maybe something like that. And then with my dry wet controls, I can add a little distortion. So this is the effect of, a, of an exciter. That's my original guitar. And with tube saturation in this case, or with, with tape saturation creates different kind of harmonics so it's up to you to decide which one works for the instrument that you want the general rule remember try to use just a little exciter not too much please just be conservative in that situation